Hello everyone, this is Dr. Shelley Plum and I'd like to welcome you all to Stray Talk. We are here today to talk about a very, very important topic. I, it's about 2 o'clock today and I have to tell you that my energy levels are waning. So this is definitely a very important topic for us to talk about. We are talking about increasing daily energy. I have to tell you, we are extremely excited to have a wonderful specialist with us today. We have Dr. Kim Crawford. I'd like to say hello to Dr. Kim. How are you? Hi, Dr. Shelley. How are you today? I'm doing great. I am very, very good. Uh, Dr. Kim, those of you that are not familiar with her, she is board certified in anti-aging and regenerative medicine by the A4M. She's also board certified in internal medicine. So, Dr. Kim, I am very curious. You know, it, it's funny, as we age, energy levels really seem to wane. Can you give us, are there physical factors that occur as we age that cause our energy levels to drop? Can you comment on that? Sure, absolutely, Shelley. You know, whereas your family physician may say to you, you know what, you're getting older, um, part of getting older is losing your energy. Um, don't accept that for an answer because that's just not true. What happens as we get older is we have less restorative sleep for a number of reasons. One of them is that melatonin levels start dropping off about age 30. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other factors. There's a lot of hypothyroidism or low thyroid levels that just plain aren't diagnosed because your physician may not know the right test to get. Um, there may be a little bit of mood decline, you know, our happy neurochemicals go down as we get older, so a little bit of depression can cause energy uh, dips. Um, our American diet's very inflammatory, a lot of processed foods and fast foods, and that in and of itself can cause energy dips. Um, weight gain causes energy loss. Muscle mass, if you think about it, as we get older, we lose muscle right. mass. What, you know, what gets us around all day? Our muscles. If we have to use more energy to get around, we're going to be more tired at the end of the day. Um, even, the state, even the state of hydration, you know, how much you're drinking, your urine should be clear. Um, stress, as we get older, there are more things to deal with. A lot of us that have children and aging parents are caught in that, you know, that, that section of people where we're kind of stressed on both ends. And um, another thing that happens as we age is that our mitochondria, or cells of respiration, produce less energy, or ATP. There are supplements that can augment that, but most regular doctors just don't know about that. And then finally, there's another diagnosis called adrenal fatigue, which is something that is pretty rampant and is another topic in and of itself. Oh, that's very interesting. I mean, those are a lot of things that, you know, we don't think about. I mean, for example, the hypo, hypothyroidism, I mean, that alone and, and what really hits home is what you just said is that a lot of physicians really don't think, I guess, to, to test for those things. So that's really very, very enlightening. Now, you know, there was one thing that I read that I wanted to discuss with you, and I know that you had brought it up in one of our emails that we were emailing back and forth, is, you know, when we have low energy, you know, we're, we're down. And the way we carry ourselves, I read that, that really people are diagnosed a lot of times with depression when it's really their energy levels that are an issue. Can you comment on that? Do you see that in your practice? Oh, I, I see it coming in. Sure. I see a lot of patients, right. um, new patients coming in on antidepressants. In fact, it just shocks me the number of new patients that do not have depression had nothing even resembling depression that were put on antidepressants. And, you know, with the amount of patients that family practice doctors and internal medicine doctors are, you know, being forced to see nowadays, uh, a patient's getting about five minutes of time. How can you make any sort of diagnosis in five minutes, even ten minutes? You know, the difference oh, between... 
difference between low energy, which has causes from being anemic, hypothyroid, having an awful disease, you know, there's just many, many reasons, um, to depression, which is a real mood disorder. Somebody feels depressed. They have sleep disturbances. I mean, you just, if you just take a good history, you cannot confuse the two. But I have seen, I have seen more than my share of patients with um, treatable low energy levels um, treated with antidepressants, and then they just feel numb, but they're still tired, right? Right. No, and you know what? I'll tell you, because I know that you know, and the guests out there also know that I'm a uh, podiatric physician, and obviously in doing our HMPs, I have been practicing now for 15 years, and I don't know if it's my imagination, but the, there it seems to be an increased percentage of the population that are on antidepressants now. So what you're saying is fascinating to me. And how does that, what we were just talking about, the antidepressant, does that relate to the adrenal fatigue that you were talking about earlier? Um, well, you know what, some doctors, uh, you know, adrenal fatigue is something that as an internist I wasn't taught about. Even endocrinologists who are supposedly the internists who specialize in hormones um, don't know about adrenal fatigue when you talk to them. If you talk to any A4M or certified doctor, we all know exactly what adrenal fatigue is. And in fact, um, sure, there are doctors that will treat patients who have adrenal fatigue with antidepressants because they don't know what adrenal fatigue is. And just, you know, in layman's terms, well, it's, it's burnout. That's what it is. It usually um, occurs after long periods of psychological or physical stress and people start feeling, say, mid-afternoon energy dips. And then they'll start having trouble with, with sleeping through the night. And then they'll start having mid-morning energy dips. And then they'll start waking up feeling unrefreshed and then because they're getting so little sleep then they'll start getting a little bit depressed and then they'll get put on antidepressants you see how that uh, yeah that's, it's a chain reaction <laughs> it really is and what it is it's it's the adrenal glands or putting out too much cortisol in response to a stress and too much right. cortisol over the long term causes immune system deficits, causes all sorts of problems, but immediately it will cause these energy problems. And let me add that what a lot of people do is they up their caffeine intake and they start sure. drinking energy. And if they do that, it's going to make it worse. So okay. you know, as you know, is getting these symptoms, um, find an A4M doctor, get salivary cortisols done. Uh, it's a very easy diagnosis. Right. I can diagnose okay. it over the phone and talk to somebody. Right, right. Okay, that's that's definitely wonderful, wonder, wonderful information for us. So, for uh, just in concluding our our interview here, if there is oh gosh, three take home tips that you can give us for increasing our daily energy that we may not be thinking about, what would those tips be? Oh, I only get three, Shelley? Hmm, okay. You have more than that. I would love more than that. <laughs> Okay. Well, you know what? Um, I would say look at your diet. Try to eat real food. You know, slow down. Okay. If you can eliminate the fa you know the fast foods and the processed foods. Try to get on a regular exercise regimen. If you're not sleeping well, figure out is it that you're not falling asleep because of stress? In which case, address your stress levels. Are you waking up in the middle of the night? Are you waking up unrefreshed? You know, don't just go to a doctor and get a sleeping pill. Figure out why and get refreshed sleep. That's a really important thing. Okay, um, sure. And really avoid the energy drinks. And um, we do have, nat there are natural supplements to adjust to brain chemicals that actually, you know, I use in my practice. I use at Dr. Kim's AgeWell Solutions for my clients. And they help to, you know, they help patients lose weight, get energy, get underpressed, get unanxious. So, you know, um, if you're going to think about going on a pharmaceutical, think not twice, but 20 times before you say yes. That's what my right. closest advice would be. Oh, you know what, Shelly? I want to tell you, yes. listeners, one more thing. Do I have another minute Absolutely. here? Absolutely. Okay. Yes, I want, go right ahead. Okay, I want to go back on hypothyroidism because some people will still go to their doctor and ask for thyroid tests, 
have the wrong tests performed. And so I want everybody to know what the right tests are, okay? Okay, and great. So, yeah. so that they can write them down. A free T3, a free okay. T4, a TSH, a reverse T3 to look at clogged up binding sites, and thyroid peroxidase antibodies, TPO antibodies to see if there's an autoimmune thyroid disease. Those are the only tests you need. And in A4M, you have to be in the top two-thirds of a free T3, free T4, and your basal temperature every morning for a week has to be over 97.3 because there are some people with normal thyroid function tests who have symptoms of hypothyroidism and are just not being diagnosed. It's a very, very undiagnosed condition. So I just wanted your, your listeners to know the proper tests. I think that's, that's very valuable for them. And just very quickly, uh, for those of them out there that do not know, or can you know, can you explain what A4M is and why it's important? Well, it's the American College of Anti-Aging Medicine. And, you know, it's not as if it's a bunch of um, untrained MDs. In fact, they're very highly trained MDs. I went in there with a board certification in uh, 25 years prior of internal medicine practice, which started out as a, you know, I was a critical care internist. So it's not as if I didn't learn how to practice medicine the quote conventional way, um, using pharmaceuticals, et cetera. But um, those doctors who then take whatever certification they have and then go on to get re-board certified. And to get board certified, you have to go through and become a diplomat, and that means a written board certification. And then you have to go through um, a bit of a grueling oral board certification where they ask you everything under the sun. And you really have to know what you're doing to be board certified right. in the specialty. But everybody who's an A4 and board certified doctor has already been board certified in something that's more traditional, like internal medicine or family medicine or something like that. And the difference is, is that we use natural things instead of pharmaceuticals to treat oh. conditions. And we're proactive. You know, we will see something coming and we will do something that will prevent the disease from expressing itself. And really the difference between pharmaceuticals and the natural supplements we use, if you think about it, what's a pharmaceutical? It's a natural substance that's been altered chemically so that a pharmaceutical company can patent it and sell it. Well, we just right. use derivatives and so that there's no side effects and uh, the effects of what we do are seen much more rapidly than with pharmaceuticals. And we can add lots and lots of supplements, whereas you certainly cannot take more than three pharmaceuticals without having a logarithmic, um, you know, pretty bad effect. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. Well, wonderful. Well, I, on behalf of Plum Talk, I want to take the opportunity to thank you very much for spending time with us today. Really very valuable information. Thank you. Well, thank you, Dr. Shelley. It's been just a pleasure. I'll come back anytime. Oh, we will certainly enjoy that, and we welcome that. So for those, those guests out there watching, if you would like to contact Dr. Kim and get more information about what we have been talking about today, you can access her at her website, drkimsagewellsolution.com. You can see her contact information right there on the screen, so I, I encourage you all to contact her. Uh, for those of you out there, again, this is Straight Talk with Dr. Shelley Plum. Don't forget to contact us at Plum Talk Women. Com. Our email is info at plumtalkwomen.com and don't forget to like us on Facebook. We will see you definitely very soon. Thank you.